Excellency, the President of the Republic of Uganda, um, the First Lady, all protocol observed, the Amonas here present, through my Minister of Health, I would want to give what I consider a summarized statement of what happened since I got in touch with the late Right Honorable Speaker when he became ill. It was precisely about two years ago that the genesis of the ailment of the late speaker started. That is about late October 2019. The story goes, he discovered he had a lung on the left side of his neck. And he went and got surgery to remove a piece of that lung. And that is called a biopsy. The result turned out to show it was cancerous. So what he did was to seek for a second opinion. <laughs> but he did it privately. He went to Germany. And while he was in Germany, he was reviewed. And the entire process was repeated. Another biopsy was taken. And the result turned out to show that indeed it was cancer. The difference was that the type that was shown in Uganda was different from what came out in Germany. In Germany, they confirmed that he had a type of cancer called diffuse large B cell non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. You can just call it lymphoma in short. And because of that, and the agreement with the diagnosis, a staging was done. And the staging is just simply to show how far the cancer has gone. And they gave it a stage of three. That means it has gone far, but not yet too far. It can still be treated. So because he opted for that treatment privately, indeed, it was started. He was given counsel that this must, might take a while. It was going to take about five months. In our language, we say six cycles of treatment. That lasts about, actually, five months. And he was going to be getting it from that hospital in Heidelberg, in Germany. And indeed, he stayed there a while to receive two cycles of the six cycles that he was supposed to get. And then he came back to Uganda. But while in Uganda, that was around February now, 2020, that was the time of the lockdown due to the COVID pandemic. And because of that, he could not actually go back to Germany to get his treatment from there. And when he called his doctors, the doctors simply advised him that without now you coming here, we would want you to get in touch very quickly with a qualified oncologist in Uganda so that your treatment can actually be continued from Uganda. And that was actually when he called me for the first time and it was a very interesting encounter. I went to his home uh, to see him. And when I went to his home, the first thing he told me was that, oh, Omera, 
That means, my brother, I'm very happy to see you. I say it, I'm equally happy to see you. And what he said, let us go straight to business. I have a patient who has been diagnosed with a cancer called lymphoma, and it is stage three. What do you think I should do? I said, ah, Omera, this is very simple. This is the disease where I am an expert. That is actually my area of expertise, and that is my area of research as well. So you show me, where is the patient? I want to see the patient immediately. He laughed, and then he said, the patient is myself. Dear Monas, I nearly collapsed when he told me that. But anyway, since he wanted to know the prognosis of the disease, what it takes to treat the disease, we sat down and I told him that this is something which is treatable and it can be treated with the intention to cure. So we must actually do our best to make sure that it's cured. I also took a look at some of the information that he got from Germany and indeed I agreed entirely uh, with the approach that they were taking. One of the things that they said was that after completing the sixth cycle of the treatment, the next aim should be for him to undergo a treatment called stem cell transplant. And if that doesn't work, then we go on to do what they call gene therapy. That is now with the aim of making sure that he is cured of this disease. But in the first place, we need to continue with the cycles of chemotherapy that he was supposed to get. So we took over, we registered him formally at the Uganda Cancer Institute, and we constituted a team to look after him. We have been looking after patients with this type of diseases, and actually our outcome has been quite good, so we didn't see any reason to worry. So we started this treatment, we gave him the third cycle, the fourth cycle, the fifth cycle, and the sixth cycle, and he was doing great. What we decided to do was that, indeed, in our practice, the person who stages the patient knows better how to restage or to look at the person after completion of treatment. So we had actually planned that he would go back to Germany, and those are the people who do what we call the restaging workup. And we thought by that time, uh, the COVID lockdown would be over so that he could fly and go to Germany and we'll give him a full report on what we have done on our part as the Uganda Cancer Institute. Unfortunately, that was not to be because the lockdown continued and Germany was closed, he could not go. So what we did was to increase for him an additional cycle and then do the restaging ourselves. And actually, our outcome was that he was in complete remission. That means we could not see any evidence of the cancer anymore at that time. And that was around uh, May, June 2020. And because of that, we decided that now our focus should now be on the next level of his treatment, which is the stem cell transplant. And I told him that I'm available anytime. Uh, he can call me so that we start planning for that. But unfortunately, he got rather occupied with other duties, including, of course, the duties of parliament. And because of that, it took us a while because before we could meet. And the next time we met, or the next time he called me again, was almost six, seven months later. And what he was telling me was that actually the mass had come back, the same site. And I said, what is happening right now? He said that he was undergoing some evaluation by a surgeon. And I told him that, let me talk to the surgeon. And I talked with the surgeon. He gave me the phone. And we concurred that he needed to again repeat the biopsy so that we know, is this the same cancer or is it a different one? which has come back. And actually, the biopsy was done. It showed that it was still the same. So 
we restarted him again on now what we call second line treatment. And we gave him two cycles of treatment with very, very remarkable improvement. The disease was still very, very uh, sensitive. And that now brings us to about now uh, May uh, and April, uh, April and May of 2021. And actually after that again, he got also rather busy. And again, something else happened. He again called me that, hey, Dr. Ren, where are you? Come, I want to see you. So I rushed and I found him actually admitted in a clinic. And what he told me was that he had undergone another surgery, which I did not know of. And this time it was for a repair of a hernia that he thought was bothering him. And what happened was that this repair got complicated because there was obstruction of the gut in that incision. And actually that now meant we now have a completely different situation in our hand. He was very sick, he could not eat. Everything was being given to him through the vein, including his food, his, his feeding. So in that situation now, the cancer issue takes a back seat because now the emergency is saving him from the complication of surgery. And actually, to cut a long story short, immediately an arrangement was made, he was airlifted uh, to Dubai. That is where now the complication of the surgery was actually addressed and handled properly. But before he left for Dubai, I actually myself wrote a report, a detailed report, that shows that despite the fact that this patient has this surgical problem, the main problem we have with him is cancer. So once the emergency is handled, we should not lose sight of the cancer. And actually, after the emergency was handled, the doctors in Dubai, they were also so good, they looked at my report, they followed exactly what I indicated in the report, and the treatment for the cancer was resumed after the operation. And that now brings us to about August and September of 2021. And he comes back from Dubai and he reports to me. And actually, we look at the re report from the doctors in Dubai. They say, for the surgical part, we have now no problem. Now you concentrate on the treatment of the lymphoma. And that is where we kind of now zeroed. And it came to October, we had given him an additional two cycles, and he told me that he was going somewhere. And again there, our communication broke. So that is now from October. The next time I hear again back from him was through my Honorable Minister Achein in the middle of January uh, this year telling me that actually he was not well at all and he, uh, she decided to get him admitted in Mulago quietly and I should actually make my way and go and find out and try to see how best I can be of help. And indeed, I again got in touch with him. My first question to him was, right honorable Prime, uh, speaker, what have I done to you? Why have you done this to us? For him, he was just telling me that Omera, my brother, if you want to help me, help me. There is now no reason for you to quarrel. <laughs> anyway, so <clears throat> what we decided to do was to constitute now a wider team because now we have the complication of the surgery still lingering. We have other issues now coming in. We also have the cancer to handle. So we have a lot on our plate. And indeed, actually, we constituted a team. We worked very, very hard to the extent that actually he could improve and be in a position to travel abroad. Now, that is also another story that I need to bring to you, Your Excellency, that we do have actually very good centers outside of the country with whom we can collaborate to do some of the things that we are doing. And this is one of the things we have been doing for a long time. 
and we do know who can do what around the world. And I want to really thank uh, the late uh, Right Honourable Speaker for actually accepting the advice that I gave him. Because there were so many options that were being given to him for the treatment. And the one that I gave him, I told him, I said, I have collaborators with whom we can actually retrace the step that we had planned for your treatment. For instance, now, we have exhausted the first line treatment. We have exhausted the second line treatment. So now the options that are left for you are only two. There is the third line and the fourth line. And all these, they are a bit experimental, but there are some of them that are approved that we can go for. So the only place I know that I can vouch for that we should go to is in Seattle at the Fred Asisson Cancer Research Center and the Seattle Cancer Center Alliance, with whom I've really developed a very long relationship, and I can be accountable to them, they can also be accountable to me. And he agreed, and that is how actually we ended up in Seattle. But unfortunately, when he reached Seattle, there were also other issues, because the plan was already drawn that, yes, after the long travel, let him stabilize, and after stabilizing from the travel, the effect of the air travel, then the next thing we are going to do is to test the type of the cancer to see whether they can actually match with these two types of treatment that we have. That is the stem cell transplant and then the gene therapy or the cut therapy, which is really now the, the topmost in as far as treatment of lymphoma, like the one he had. Is, is concerned. So <clears throat> when now he reached there, the stabilization went very well. He actually got better. Actually, by the time I left to come back, I spent two weeks with him in Seattle. By the time I left to come back, everything was looking very good because he was jovial, he was up and about, and the next thing that was now left was just to plan for starting him on the next treatment as we had planned for him to go there and receive. Unfortunately, he started developing fevers and uh, investigations were done. He started getting weaker and then they found out that he has, well, he has viral infection, which was overwhelming, and also some bacterial infection. And then thirdly, his bone marrow were not now responding. Even if it is stimulated, it is no longer producing the, 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 the blood cells that are needed that are so crucial for the type of treatment that he was going to be receiving. And that is actually when now his condition started going down. And the last I received from the people in Seattle, this is now what I'm going to read as my final remark, is just there is not much now that can be done because all our plans cannot now be achieved because if the bone marrow is not working, then where are we going to get the stem cells from? If the fever cannot be subsided, the viral uh, infection cannot be controlled, a viral infection called cytomegalovirus, or CMV, cannot be controlled, then how are we going to now go to do stem cell transplant, which actually requires a lot of immunosuppression, and then also a lot of other, uh, other, other, other measures that by themselves can depress the immune system. That is the reason why he never got onto now the true treatment that we had wanted him to undergo, that in our hearts of hearts we thought was going to actually be the magic bullet that was going to cure him. And that was not to be, and actually, Precisely on the 19th uh, of uh, the 19th of March at 8:50 a.m. our time, that is when the Right Honourable Jacob Lokori Olanya actually died. That is the brief uh, history, as my Honourable Minister said in my own language, but I feel that 
if time was on our side, the history, the result, the outcome of this disease would have been very, very, very different. But unfortunately, that is how it has ended up. I don't have much to say. What I can say is that the cause of death as read in the parliament of Uganda by the Minister of Health is very accurate. I corroborated it uh, with my colleagues in Seattle. That is what caused death, and there is no other issue that we should think about. Uh, the colleagues on the other side also thought that if it was so that there were other issues that they suspected, they would have subjected him to test for those other issues. So for now, the accurate cause of death is just what the minister said in parliament. And personally, I don't think there is any other cause that we should be thinking about. I want to thank you. Back to my honorable minister.